Hi, I'm Miss Wiggin, and today I'm going to help you go from grams to formula units of a single compound. In this case, we're going to be talking about copper 2 sulfate, so you'll have to know how to name. This is an ionic compound. And sulfate here, we've got, well, copper is a transition metal, and so we've got a charge of 2, and sulfate is going to be one of our polyatomics. So we would need our fancy chart for that. That's, if you're in my class, it's at the bottom table here. So sulfate, we're gonna go ahead and get the formula taken care of. When I say formula units, I'm literally gonna be talking atoms, compounds, molecules. This is, uh, non-metal with non-metal. We're going to be dealing with ionic compound here. So um, when I say formula units, I'm talking about the compounds, number of compounds in a given something. In this case, it's going to be in a given amount grams. So we're going from mass to number of compounds within that mass. Okay, so sulfate here, we find it on our polyatomic. Right here, it has a minus two, so it's SO4. Four, and it's good to look at the charges, minus two. We know that copper here is Cu, and conveniently, it's got a plus two charge, so these things cancel out already, they go to zero, so copper sulfate is just the combination of these two ions. All right. So I like to say when you get started with these things, you want to take what you're given and we put it over one. It just sets up our problem. We know that we're going to be talking about a whole number here. So I'm starting with 15.00. Your significant figures are relevant when you're doing calculations. So 15 grams, and I'm going to say exactly what I'm talking about here, which is copper, Cu, copper 2 sulfate, Cu, SO4. All right. Yeah, I'm going to put that over one. And I'm going to be going to, um, I'm going to be going to formula units. So number one, this is going to be, a, it's going to be a lot because you can fit a lot of atoms per gram. I also, it's worth noting that this problem is going to be multi-steps, and the reason for that is you can't just go from grams to compounds because we don't have, it doesn't have anything in common. Those two units don't relate to each other. They, now, we do have conversion um, factors that do relate to, the, to each other, though. We've got molar mass. Maybe I ought to use a different color here, right? Just if you recall, got molar mass. Which is X grams of something per one mole. And we've got that awesome conversion factor of how much is in a mole, and that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and that is equal to one mole. All right, so right off the bat, you can see mole, and mole is talked about here. So we can actually use these two to get ourselves over there, and it's gonna be pretty painless. You just have to pay attention to what unit you need where, and you're gonna need both of these things if you're ever, ever going from grams to formula units, molecules, atoms, that sort of thing. Or if, or if you're going the other way, you're just going to flip them differently. So this works no this technique works no matter what kind of problem you're talking about. All right? As long as you're talking about the same thing. You get into balancing equations and you have two different things, you're going to need something a little different, which we're not going to discuss here. That item is called molar ratio. All right, so here we go. So 15 grams, and you would need your periodic table to calculate 
your molar mass. Um, I'm going to assume you know how to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and just give that to you. And the molar mass for copper 2 sulfate is 159.61 grams CuSO4 for one mole of CuSO4. Hopefully you can see that. I wrote that kind of low there. Okay. So now the question is, which do I use first? Well, I'm going to use the one that has grams. So I'm going to use molar mass because it has grams right here. And I'm not too happy with where it's at right now. I want grams to kind of get out of there. So we're going to, we're going to flip this and I'm just going to take the whole conversion. This whole thing is going to slide in right here. So here we go. 59.61 grams CuSO4. Okay, and I'm going to take the rest of that. One mole uh, of, and I've got to say it, CuSO4. Keep those units, keep track. Okay, so we're done with, we've used this. Okay, so we've already used this one. And now we're out of grams. Grams goes away. And now we're in one mole. And notice that I included CuSO4. That'll be important later on when we're talking about different compounds together. All right. So now did the question ask us for moles? No, it's asking us for molecules. So we're going to actually have to set this up so that you can get to molecules. So we're going to have to use Avogadro's number, very fancy amount. And again, the way it's set up right now seems to actually work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that because I wanna get rid of moles. I want it to kind of disappear. So one mole, again, of anything, all right? One mole of anything, CuSO4, is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 formula, we'll say formula, units, CuSO4. There's your setup. You're all good to go. You're good to hop on your calculator. And what you're going to do is, I like to say a math step. And I'm going to put that in a different color because this is just what's happening. What's going on there? So here's, this is math. All right. And this is always good because chemistry teachers, we like to give you partial credit where we can. And if we can see something's going on in your math, we can still give you credit for this whole setup. Um, even if your answer isn't looking too perfect. Okay. So the way it works is you multiply across first. Right, so this is getting multiplied, and technically these ones are getting multiplied there. So, you multiply across, you should get 9.03 times 10 to the 24th, right? You should definitely be doing these calculations yourself, so pause it if you have to, double check my math. Don't believe it, just because I wrote it up here, okay? Um, and then your bottom calculation, all right, it's just multiplied times one, so 159.61. All right, and I'm not putting my units here because I'm just dealing with the calculations here. These are just raw numbers. Um, but after I've done my math, make sure you go ahead, pause it, make sure you agree, all right, before I reveal the answer to you. Right off the bat, before I even calculate, I know what my units are going to be because grams are gone, moles are gone, and whatever you've got left over here, which is why it's really important to write your units, um, if you write your units right, your calculations should wind up correct. All right, so whatever I have right here, um, that's what my units are going to be right there. It's also nice because 
you have to do a lot of writing, but you know, it should be correct. You know your units over here, formula units. And remember, that's the same thing as saying compounds, atoms, whatever the question's asking. All right, and make sure you say what you're talking about, C-U-S-O-4, all right. And you should wind up with 5.66, I'll leave myself enough room, times 10, to the 20, 22nd, <laughs> trying to do these. Let me double check myself, 22nd, that's good. 22nd there, okay. And does that make sense? Well, yeah, it does, because you're talking about something that's really, really minuscule in comparison to a gram of something, which you know has this fancy number, which is a astronomically huge number when you're talking about things as big as as we are, but when you're talking about atoms, you're so tiny that one gram of this stuff will be a tiny little pile in my hand. It's, it's, this stuff's actually pretty cool stuff. It's a little blue powder and it's used in aquariums to take care of fish. Side note. Anyway, as long as you carry your units, keep them in the right place, you write down exactly what kind of grams what kind of moles, all right? What kind of formula units, you should be okay. All right, that's it for this quick tutorial. If you were um, going the other way, you would wind up flipping these around. But once again, in order to go from grams to formula units or formula units to grams, you only need these two conversion factors. You line them up right, you drop them in there, you calculate, you show your math step, always show that just so we can tell where you're getting your numbers from and you should be fine. The last thing I would note, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but if you're really struggling with the exponents in the calculator, you might have an E button or an EE -E button. You make sure you put parentheses and instead of writing times 10, just use this EE -E button, 6.02, EE, -E, and then you should be able to put 23rd in there. Put parentheses over it, divide. If you divide by something, like in this case, 159.61 was what we divided here. Put parentheses around anything. I always do, I kind of use them a little bit, but it keeps your numbers, it keeps your order of operations contained to the right places. All right, that's it for this video. I hope that helps and if you're part of my class, I'll see you in class. Bye.